Epiphany Sunday is a beloved little moment in the church calendar. The day the Magi discover and do homage to Jesus. The exact age of Jesus is not important. The exact number of Magi is not important. We traditionally think of them as three. Could be different. Not important. Knowing the exact birthday of Jesus is not important. I know those details can get fuzzy. Sometimes it can be hard to get a straight answer out of history without feeling like someone somewhere is lying to you. History can be tricky like that. And yeah, there are some fakers and opportunists out there that are willing to take advantage of our collective ignorance. But most historians mean well, and they simply fail to agree on one specific answer to a specific question. How old exactly was Jesus when the Magi came? He might have been one. If a historian came up and said, well, actually, he was closer to three or four, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the nature of the story. Here's what's important. This is a matter of the revelation of faith, and therefore we can be confident in the accuracy of the text. What is important is that the Magi somehow knew someone very important was born. They knew that King Herod saw this newborn person as a threat for some reason. And they set off to find this special individual. And when they finally found Jesus, they knew exactly who he was. So how do we know that with certainty? When I just said all these historical facts may or may not be 100% accurate, how can we say that they knew who Jesus was with confidence? Because of the gifts. The gifts indicate that the Magi knew who they were dealing with. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold for a king, frankincense for the high priest. Right off the bat, that's weird. That's weird because nobody is a king and a priest. You do not get to do that. Jesus is basically the first person that's king and priest at the same time. When you are one, that excludes you from being the other. It's a little like giving someone a priest collar and a wedding ring for the same birthday. Like, sorry, you gotta pick one. So the fact they knew that Jesus was both king and priest, that alone indicates that they knew they were dealing with someone very special and unique. And then, of course, they also gave him myrrh, which is for burial rites. That is a weird thing to give a baby or a very young child. And they gave him that because they knew for some reason Jesus' ultimate mission would not be complete without a sacrificial death. They probably didn't know the full details. For instance, they may not have known that crucifixion was Jesus' you know, ultimate destiny and all that. They might have. But they knew that Jesus would not live to enjoy a lovely, peaceful retirement. Jesus would die in service of God and universal salvation. That's what this day is all about. Wise people who knew exactly who Jesus was. A different kind of king, a true high priest, not like most priests back then where you're a priest for a certain number of time, a certain amount of time when it's your uh, turn, and then you go back to your ordinary life. No, Jesus is high priest for life, and he is someone who will be called to give his life when the time comes. So we should all be like the Magi in our willingness to see Christ for who he is and our willingness to see Christ within us. And we should be willing to see how we can mold our lives more and more like his. So you always know what a priest is reading if you pay attention to his homilies. So I'm working on my Christmas gift from the Archbishop. It's Christmas homework. <laughs> I always read these, but he gave a big old fat book to us this year. It's um, uh, Pope John Paul II wrote a letter to his bishops and priests all around the world 
um, every year around Holy Thursday. And he was Pope for 27 years. This is a long book. But he wrote some beautiful things in there. Uh, I'm on 1981, so I'm, I'm getting there. But uh, he wrote in 1979, first years of his, year, of his pontificate, and he explained and reminded all the priests around the world, this is his first message to priests as Pope, and he said that our office and mission of Jesus Christ has a triple dimension. That means we don't have three unrelated jobs of priest, prophet, and king. We have a mission, the salvation of souls, and that mission has three dimensions, priest, prophet, and king. They fit together. They make a greater whole together. Now I'll remind you what an epiphany is, what the word means, is when divine reality manifests before you. An epiphany is when you see God undeniably in front of you and it calls us to conversion which is a pretty straightforward thing to say. If God is right there in front of you, your life is never going to be the same. And conversion, again, this is what Pope Paul, uh, John Paul II wrote. He said, conversion means giving an account of our negligence, of our sins, of our timidity, of our lack of faith and hope, of our thinking of only in a human way and not in a divine way. He's writing this to priests. He says, it also means seeking again the pardon and strength of God and the sacrament of reconciliation and thus always beginning anew, every day progressing, overcoming ourselves, making spiritual conquests and giving cheerfully, for God loves a cheerful giver. So he said, you priests, you need to convert to Christ every day. Because you have doubts, and you have sins, and you have cowardice, and you offer all of that to Christ. And as he wrote that to the ministerial priesthood, the same message for the common priesthood which we all share. Remember what I always say at baptisms, most of them happen now at 930 Mass, all Christians are baptized priest, prophet, and king. So look inside yourselves. When was the time in your life that you felt most like the Magi? When was a time when you had an experience of some kind that shook up the way you see the world or your place in the world? Have you ever been at a crossroads of life where you felt the need to convert and make a real change in your life? Because that very well could be an epiphany. Some people, they get hit in the face by God during normal prayer. It's like God is slapping you awake. Snap out of it. Some people get that. For other people, it's hitting that low point in life and they realize, no, I need to throw away the cigarettes or I need to quit and I need to find a job that's not literal torture 40 hours a week. Those two count as epiphanies. Anything can be an epiphany if it increases our ability to face our cowardice, face our sins and failings, and to increase our thankfulness to God. Those are the ways we grow closer to Christ. Those are the ways we become a little bit more like the Magi. They are our private, but still valuable, epiphanies in daily life. So keep watch and be ready to follow the guiding star, which is showing you the way to salvation.